Glad you clicked on this video. Welcome to our Bible study. We're going to be doing the or studying the book of Romans, one of my favorite books in the Bible. It has so much into it to where you're going to understand exactly what's going on in the world right now, 2023. Whatever time or year you're watching this is, you know, it's, it's something that can always be applied to whatever year. This was written uh, by the Apostle Paul to the Romans after Jesus Christ was crucified and he rose the third day. So it wasn't that, that long after. It's been around 2,000 years and everything is still uh, coming to pass in prophecies and stuff like that. So let's get into it. We're going to go right into it. And if you ever have a question, comment, or concern, make sure you leave it down below and I'll answer it in the comment section as fast as humanly possible to the best of my ability. Other than that, God bless you. Let's get into it. We got Romans chapter one, and I'm currently using the King, New King James Version. Okay, we're not going to make this too long. I want to make kind of short Bible study videos for you guys. See if I can maybe edify you and teach you something. And uh, we can all be blessed. The word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's why we need the word of God. That way we understand what our intentions are. Are, are our intentions good or bad? A lot of times we think we're doing the right thing and we're not. If we don't have the word of God, we're going to be going based on our own understanding. And the word says, never go based on your own understanding unless you're walking by faith, by grace, through faith, by the Spirit. All right, so let's get into it. All right, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of, of Jesus Christ. Okay, so again, number six is among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. All right, so if you're brand new in the faith or you're still searching the meaning of life, you came to the right channel. Faith makes one rich. Uh, I've been born again since 2014, I believe, almost 10 years now. And this channel is dedicated to you guys, whoever is curious. If you like these videos, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Be part of the ministry here. Faith makes one rich. We're going to be doing Bible studies and we're also going to be doing live Bible studies. So make sure you guys are subscribed. That way you are notified and you know when I come on come on here live. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reading uh, like a paragraph. Okay. The whole paragraph and then kind of dissecting it, going through it. So we can kind of go and understand exactly what we read. The apostle Paul, first of all, the apostle Paul, he wrote the majority of the new Testament. It goes the Old Testament, New Testament. In the New Testament, we have the Gospels, we have the letters, and then we have at the end, Revelation, written by the Apostle John. We also have Acts. Acts was written by the Apostle Luke. Luke was also a disciple. Okay, so not only that, but in the book of Acts, it's mostly the actions of the Apostle Paul. So God used Paul severely, like in a miraculous way. Paul was trying to prevent from any Christians coming about, going, going into the way. The Lord says that I am the truth, the life, and the way. The way to what? To heaven. 
Nobody goes to the Father. Nobody goes to heaven except through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's understand a little bit of context on these letters. That way we understand how powerful this is, like what we're actually reading from Paul. Paul has been inspired. Paul has been born again right here. Paul is being guided, being directed and taught by Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. It's awesome. And look at what he's writing. After persecuting the church, after persecuting the believers, the very the first church of the Lord Jesus Christ, now he has been miraculously transformed. So it is wise to pay attention to the letters. It's also, well, of course, a whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Everything plays its part is there for a reason, for our edification, for exhortation, for correction. So not only that, from there, we're going to also be going into other scriptures in order to back up exactly what we're saying, right? Because all scripture... Is God breath? It says in Second Second Timothy three sixteen. So we're gonna go ahead and go into here, and then go here. That way we have some verification, some confirmation, and uh, we understand exactly what we're reading in Romans chapter one. So right here, and this is a letter written by Paul as well. Written to Timothy. Timothy was his uh, protege. Timothy was one that took over the ministry of the Apostle Paul. By the way, the Apostle Paul ended up getting decapitated for the faith, for believing in Christ, for believing in Jesus, <laughs> for sharing the gospel. Yeah. All right, so right here he wrote to Timothy and to us. We can also apply a lot of the letters can be applied to us or to the church overall because all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Look at that. So very important to understand this. A lot of us are too prideful. We have too much ego. We are too too smart. We're we're too intelligent thinking that we know it all. Just because we're successful here in this world, somebody with a successful business or all this money or this great accomplishment or even come to a peace of mind. Let's say um, there's this new thing going around. I don't know how new it is, but it is called um, when you only have very minimal stuff to live. You don't need a lot. It's called a mini minimalist, right? Minimalist, something like that. Minimal stuff. And they're very happy. You know, they... They don't have stress. They don't have anxiety because they they pushed away all material like that. They barely have the, the necessities, the bare necessities. And that makes them happy just because you're at that level. Still, what good is it that you get to that level, are very successful and are very intelligent? You're very educated. You have all these awards and all that. But at the end, end you end up losing your own life, your own soul. Let's get more more detailed because the, the flesh is going to die, right? The, the, the flesh is going to die. That's one thing we all have in common. But then the soul, the soul is what we're trying to figure out the meaning of it because um, the soul is made in the image of God. So you have the option to live forever. In eternal life you get to see the real the real power after this when your soul is now awakened into eternal life but that soul can also be you can can be perished so right here in mark 8 36 written by mark 
for what will it profit a man or woman if he or she gains the whole world or gains success, gains a certain level of peace, a certain level of comfort, happiness. But if you don't have Christ, if you have, if you don't have your sins commit, I mean, uh, your sins forgiven, then your soul is going to perish. You will, you will lose your soul. Your soul will be done with in hell. Let's be exact. For what will it profit a man or woman if he or she gains the whole world and loses his or her own soul? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Okay, so there you have it right there. That is Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 6. Written to us. So again, to close it down, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God which, with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience. Because the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak, but the Spirit will be willing to do the right thing. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. That is Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 6. Be looking out for my other Bible study. I'll be doing more and more as often as possible. Hope you were edified. Hope you were blessed. Make sure you guys hit the like button if you guys like these videos before you leave. And also subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Join the ministry. You guys take care. Be safe. God bless you.